All right, let's go live to the CBDforyou.net hotline. You don't have to live in pain anymore. Having trouble sleeping, inflammation, depression, anxiety, HIV, or cancer, CBD is the perfect solution to get your life back on track. Today's interview with David McLean is brought to you by CBDforyou.net. That's CBDFORYOU.net. We are joined by wrestling promoter and television producer. He was the creator of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, women of wrestling, World Roller Hockey League, Pro Beach Hockey, and Triple Crown of Polo. We are joined by David McLean. How you doing, David? Fantastic. How are you, Mickey? Great to be on your station today. Man, I am doing great. Thank you so much for your time. Well, I know you want to talk about your new WOW show coming up. Let's get started at the very beginning real quickly. Now, you grew up watching wrestling with your brothers at a very young age, and I found this very interesting that you started a fan club for Dick the Bruiser, and it got his attention. And he actually invited you to come work with his promotion. Now, as a teenager, when you got, uh, I guess, the communication from Dick the Bruiser that he wanted you to come down and talk to him, I'm looking at some pictures of this guy. Uh, I'd have been pretty hesitant. I thought I would be like, he's trying to lure me in to kill me. What was your first thoughts? (laughs) That is what I thought when (laughs) that police picked me up in an arena one night, Indianapolis Expo Center, and brought me backstage and said, the Bruiser wants to see you. Now, I've been watching The Bruiser on TV since I was a kid, probably since I was 7, 8, 9, and here I am, 13, and the cops are taking me back. Oh, wow. and this mammoth guy with a chest almost as big as Hulk Hogan's. This was about 58 inches. I think the Hulk, the top, was 60. And these 19-inch arms comes down the stairs and says, Hey, kid. Who gave you permission to sell my picture? Oh. And I said, I said nobody. And he said, Well, that's illegal, and it's trademark infringement. Infringement? What the heck? I don't even know how to spell the word. I don't know what it means. I don't know what he's saying. And he and I started almost to cry. And he says, How much money you make tonight? And I told him not too much, maybe twenty, thirty bucks. He says, Well, twenty percent of it is mine. Oh. I'm your new partner. <laughs> and I, and my buddy in Indianapolis, who became a very famous photographer, Scott Romer, he and I would go down either with his dad, mom, somebody driving us, or Sam Miniker, who was the announcer, famed announcer there. And um, we would take photographs of the wrestlers and hang out in the locker room. And what a thrill for a kid between, you know, 14 to 18, hanging out with the Bruiser, Big Cat, Ernie Ladd, the Assassin, Dick the Bruiser. And when I would travel, I would come down in your neck of the woods to Louisiana, and I would go to New Orleans and work my way into the back dressing room area because I knew many of the wrestlers that had come to Indy like Ernie the Cat Ladd. And so it created a fantasy life for me when when I was a kid. And that led me into seeing a women's wrestling match. I eventually became the announcer. And when I saw the gleam in the eye of the fans, when, you know, as the announcer, I was able to say, would you like to see these women wrestlers wrestle in a cage match? And the fans screamed. I told the bruiser we had just found the new promotion, women's wrestling. And he told me, it's never going to go. Never. No one wants to see women's wrestling. And, uh, That, along with how I saw they weren't treated as well as the men, and I always thought that was odd when they put in just as much effort. And subsequently, I went around my hometown of Indianapolis trying to put up posters to get women's wrestlers to sign up. I was was dead set on setting a lead, and I was thrown out of the gyms, probably some pervert or weirdo, they thought, (laughs) for women wrestlers. And... uh, a friend told me, go west, go west. So I came out to uh, Los Angeles, put up an ad in the trades, and had the very first casting for GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, at Gold Gym, which still exists today in Venice. And uh, any fans that have ever watched Netflix GLOW and seen the opening where they're in a little gymnasium starting and the director is introducing them, this is a show for GLOW, they almost got that right. It was a pretty good imitation, 
but the very first training of GLOW was done at the Broadway gym at 108th and Broadway, which also still exists, which is a gym in the inner city of Watts um, in L.A., and we would have the, the hopeful wrestlers come down there and train. And um, that was the beginning of modern-day women's wrestling. And you're going to see the culmination of that with all the athleticism and the expertise that has grown over 30 years in women's wrestling on Friday night, January 18th at 9 o'clock Eastern on Access TV. And you got to hand it to my business partner, who's Jeannie Buss. He's got a day job called running the L.A. Lakers. And Mark Cuban from Dallas, who owns Access TV, they're making this possible, and they're making the platform possible for these women to have the only one-hour showcase of women's professional wrestling on worldwide TV on Access. So it's a big night on January 18th. I hope everyone marks their calendar, sets their DVD if they can't watch it, and uh, live, and it'll be on 9 o'clock Eastern. What time would that be now, Mickey? That would be what, 8 yeah, the, time? 8 o'clock Central, yeah. Okay, 8 o'clock Central. There you go. Friday night, January 18th, 8 o'clock Central. Now, that is absolutely amazing. And you talked about... Uh, Bruiser telling you no when you first had the idea of what eventually led to being Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And I know you probably heard countless of times, no, this won't work. What was your main driving force that kept you motivated to stick to the course? It really was growing up in the business and seeing that women wrestlers could excel and they just weren't given a chance. And nobody at my age at that time knows the word marketing or marketeer or anything. I didn't have any of those aspirations in my mind. I had no clue when I took a photograph at 13 of Dick the Bruiser and I came back to the next wrestling event and people asked me in my, my, you know, pocket in my shirt, Hey, may I buy some of those pictures? And I sold them for 50 cents and I had no clue that I'd make $5. I had no clue, you know, what women's wrestling would grow into at the time. I just knew they needed, and I didn't even know the word then. We use the word now, platform. I just knew they needed a space. They needed a platform. Um, they could be showcased. I just watched how hard they, they performed and what they did, and um, no one was doing it. So one might look back at me and say, God, you were a marketeer, you were marketing. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I just knew they could be stars like the men. Right. And a lot of the girls today that that had made it to the heights that they have, have you to thank for that. You were a a trailblazer for women's wrestling. And, you know, I was saying to some guys the other day, and I made the comment, and I hope this doesn't sound sexist because it's not meant to be, and I'm referring to Becky Lynch, the fact that, I never thought I'd see the day where a woman was a top draw in a regular wrestling company, not not an all-women's company. And I was like, you know, it's fantastic what Becky Lynch is doing. And she has glow and wow uh, to thank for that because, I mean, you definitely push women's wrestling to the forefront. Well, I, I appreciate that acknowledgement, and I'm lucky to have it. And some of those wrestlers in WWE have written me a note or sent me a note um, to that effect saying I started and I watched my first wrestling match due to you putting it on. So I appreciate that and I'm humbled by it. Um, the occasion also happened with WOW. You know, there's, I- I'll tell you, I won't say the, the uh, wrestler's yet name, I'll just tell the story, but a, we had an event where we asked women to come in an audition, if you will, introduce themselves if they wanted to become women wrestlers for a while, about a year and a half, two years ago. And when I walked into the room, one of them in the front seat was uh, was tearing up. And I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she goes, you're David McClain. I said, yes, so what's the <laughs> deal? And she said... You're to hear the I entire interview from the creator of GLOW, David McLean, click the link below in the description.